Richardson here with Morton Sabotnik in his own studio, which is great. I'm glad that we came over here to check it out. <laughs> What do you think about where technology is now and where it used to be? I've gone almost 60 years from within a few years of the absolute beginning. And there was just, it was a very different world then. I mean, the, the biggest changes happened from around uh, the mid 50s to about 1985. And there it is, the theremin, T-H-E-R-A-M-I-N. A very strange instrument that is played without anyone touching it at all. The very biggest changes were within the first five or six years. And then from around 85 to 95, you have the infusion of the home computer. And that began to change things rather quickly. And since about 1995, it's been changing every 24 hours practically. <laughs> yeah, really. Interesting changes and good changes, but not at the level of change when we talk about change that existed in those other two periods. So the, the changes we're going through right now is a kind of almost a leveling off. I mean, whether you save on, an, on a cloud or on a hard drive, which can mean a whole lot, but you're still saving something. In the early 80s, you have the first Macintoshes, there really wasn't any saving. I mean, you, it was a, what, a 512K mm -hmm. computer. And, and as late as 1985, you couldn't do sequencing on a computer. You had to have separate sequencers. And, you know, and you had parallel things going all yeah. over the place. So where we are now is a, is a quite interesting place. You know the history of the keyboard, the typewriter keyboard? It started off as a machine where you could type letters and, and things, and they, they designed it so you could do it really fast. It was, at, it, had, it was very intelligent design where the letters you used the most would be closer together, and then the mechanism got stuck. So they reshaped it to make it exactly the opposite, the hardest possible way to type. Mm. And that's why we have so much trouble learning when we peck on it. Mm. And then when the IBM came along, uh, not the computer, but uh, before the computer, an electric typewriter which didn't have mechanisms, they tried to put the smart keyboard in and nobody would buy it. So we've sent people to the moon and we're going to spend the rest of our lives working with a keyboard that was designed to, to gnarl your fingers. Yeah. And, and that's a problem. Mm. I mean, it really is. It's the way it's going to be forever. It's just it. <laughs> The other thing that we did is some guy at the beginning of home computers, I forgot his name now, but he was a good programmer and played a keyboard. And so he invented for himself MIDI, which got accepted. But MIDI, which is the standard for absolutely everything, every piece of software that comes in, is based on a black and white keyboard. It's based on tuning and velocity when you hit the thing and you have to have little you have to add all kinds of things to be able to do the simplest thing, like, ah, uh, you can't do that. It goes, boom, and you have to add all kinds of things. Right. All software is based on that, and, mm -hmm. you, and it all is a anytime you use MIDI. But it's not just MIDI. Because everybody uses that, even software that doesn't use MIDI is still based on it. But those are the things that are holding really substantial change taking place. I made Silver Apples of the Moon with the Buchla in 1967. And the first thing that was done, which starts with squishy sounds and all over the place, it has some real pitches in it too, but they were all done just by ear and, and mm -hmm. whatever. But it certainly is not something you could play on a keyboard. Yeah. And the first thing that was done on the Moog was Bach because it's black and white keyboard. Mm -hmm. What are you gonna do with a black and white keyboard except play music like you always heard it? And mm -hmm. you can make new music, but it's still 
on the on the continuity trail, right? Mm -hmm. And that's been the trajectory. My trajectory is is a very small part of the whole syndrome. Most of it is in the black and white keyboard, like the typewriter keyboard, because it's what people are used to. They don't. Mm -hmm. Nothing else is. That's not typing. That's not a keyboard. The one that's made fast. The typing is when you do this like that. Right. <laughs> So and here's Western scale, West Africa, mm -hmm. and uh, this makes it go backwards. Upside down. Is that guy doing? Is that you? Undo, yeah, that's me. <laughs> technologies there's a point at which you want to use a computer to do absolutely everything things that it really isn't very good at doing and you could do better yourself but it it's fun to do to do that there's a certain point you a you have people who just don't want to they keep saying the good old days the good old days you mm. know or they're they're really decide you know I really do enjoy using my hands I, I like writing with a pencil and now you need a pencil and you need paper Mm -hmm. And th it, so I think a lot of the stuff we're finding now, I think people are going to go and we're going to find little companies, and they probably already start to exist, who make, well, uh, well Livid does that. They, they give yeah. you a thing and you can actually make your own. Right. They're going to be in a minority because they'll never make huge amounts of money. So the big corporations are going to leave it alone and these other people can make enough to live on. One thing that we tend to overlook is that when we say, oh, all these corporations are selling all this stuff and all these people are doing all their, no, no one's doing X. But the X was never done by everybody. It was only done by 1% of the population mm -hmm. anytime. Yeah. And the rest of the 99% weren't doing anything. Now they're all doing all this other stuff. I don't see that as bad. I think, no, that's, I don't I either, think yeah. it's really... It's really wonderful. People yeah. are expressing themselves in all sorts of ways. Yeah. And that 1% was always 1%. It was never more. Kid came to study with me and he, he said, I asked him what he wanted from me and he said, well, he said, what I want, I'd like everybody to like, to really love my music. And I said, well, you probably came to the wrong person. <laughs> <laughs> Warren, this is so great. Such a pleasure. Thank you so much for letting us come into yeah, your house. Yeah, I've enjoyed it. Thank it you. Welcome to DubSpot. We believe in providing you hands-on experience right away. Whether you're completely new to music and want to turn the sounds in your head into a musical reality, or you're an experienced artist looking to refine your skills and add new tools to your arsenal, we're ready to meet you at your level. For students of all ages, all levels, and all styles of music, DubSpot is here to help you achieve your goals. With course offerings both online wherever you are and at our school in the heart of New York City, we are ready to guide you through the next phase of your musical transformation. Whether you want to produce music, DJ, or do both, you've come to the right place. Come explore DubSpot for yourself. Become a part of our community and make music.